Our scripture lesson will be coming from Psalm 62, verse 5. And it reads, I'm eating, reading from the English Standard Version. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When God seems silent, I'm not sure of those of you who, who are married or uh, in relationship with another human being, uh, sometimes there is what people call the silent treatment. <laughs> The silent treatment when you've done something that's not pleasing to the other person and so they give you the silent treatment because they're upset or they're, they're angry with you at a decision that you have made. When you are in this season of silent treatment, it is uncomfortable, it is awkward, uh, it is frustrating because you want to talk to the other party, but they are silent. So you wonder, you know, how long is this period going to last? Um, how long before you hear a word from this person again? Um, perhaps even offended <laughs> that this person would give you the silent treatment because there is an expectation for us to receive. And these are just some of the emotions that may arise when God is seemingly <laughs> silent in our situations and our circumstances. You can look at the news today and you can see areas where God is seemingly silent. Israel, Palestine. God is seemingly silent. The promotion at work and you've been there for years and you've trained everyone else on the job, but they keep overlooking you for that promotion and you keep praying unto God for this raise and promotion and God is seemingly silent. Political unrest, <laughs> God is seemingly silent. Violence running rampant in our world, God is seemingly silent. Health issues, God is seemingly silent. Strained relationships, grief, pain, you can fill in the blank on what God may be seemingly silent on in your life. Silence is nerve-wrecking. It's a nerve-wrecking thing. The sound of silence is loud. sound of silence is loud when we crave words from a God that we know speaks. The God of the Bible is known for speaking. God is one of the things that our God is speaking is one of the things that sets our God apart from the little G gods because our God speaks. Psalm 135 and 16 they have mouths but cannot speak, referring to the little G gods. God prides God's self on the ability to speak. When we first meet God in the scriptures, God is speaking. God is creating through God's powerful word. Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And verse three says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. We come into a relationship with God. It's because we heard the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. 
As we grow in our relationship with God, our maturity is seen in how we can discern God's voice, being the sheep that know and listen to the shepherd's voice. John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And so we get so used to God speaking that we struggle when God seems silent. (laughs) The God of many words that creates just at the sound of his voice, seemingly silent in our situation. Psalm 83 and 1, the psalmist cries out, Oh God, do not remain silent. God has a history of speaking. (laughs) If you look back over your own life, you can see the ways in which God has spoken to you. How God speaks to you and when God speaks to you. And then when we find ourselves in this season where God is seemingly silent, it's unnerving. (laughs) It doesn't make any sense, (laughs) even, to wonder and to question and to be unsettled in it because we know and have a God who speaks. We are not alone in this matter, though. The Bible is filled with moments where God is seemingly silent. 1 Samuel 13 and 14, David knew God deeply. But at the same time, at points in his life, he felt the Lord had forsaken him. God seemingly silent. However, David did not cut off communication with God. Instead, he told God how he felt. He was confident that God will speak. There's Habakkuk, the minor prophet in the Old Testament. Oh, Yahweh, how long should I cry for help and you will not hear me? I cry to you, violence, and you will not save. We all know Job. Job 31 and 35. Oh, that I had one to hear me. Here is my signature. Let the Almighty answer me. Oh, that I had the indictment written by my adversary. John the Baptist, Matthew 11 and 11. Are you the one who is to come, or is there another? There's seemingly silence in the waiting. Psalm 13, verse 1. O Lord, Lord, will you forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? The psalmist repeatedly asks, how long? I'm not sure if it's been a few minutes or a few hours or days or weeks or months, possibly even. But just to hear a word from our Lord is what we crave. And right now, you may feel the pains of waiting in your situation, too. You may be waiting on that promotion, waiting to get married, waiting for a new home, waiting for things to get better. We deliver the same prayers up to God day after day, and we don't receive the prayer, the answer that we're looking for. It's natural for us to echo some of these psalmists. How long, Lord, must I wait? Wondering if God has forgotten about us, waiting is often riddled with loneliness and plagued with doubt. But the truth we find in Scripture is that an unanswered prayer is never equates to God's silence. His voice is not determined by our will being done on our timing. God works on Cairo's time. God's promises do not cancel out when we find ourselves waiting. So when God seems silent, we must ask ourselves honestly if we have limited the voice of God to the scope of our expectations. In Psalm 62, it says that, For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. If you're waiting on the voice, I encourage you to abide because joy, peace, and patience can live abundantly inside of you while you're in this season of waiting for God to answer your prayers. I encourage you to wait, perhaps even wait in silence so you can hear God clearly. We set deadlines and we set timelines and we set to-do lists, but God does not operate that way. doesn't operate according to Eastern Standard Time. 
We worship an all-knowing God, an all-loving God who sees the whole picture of our lives and holds it carefully in God's hands. And if he's got the whole world in his hands, I'm sure that he's got you and he's got me and our situations and our circumstances and our hopes and our dreams right in the palm of God's hands. In the waiting, I encourage you to draw near because his voice and his presence and his comfort and his peace are closer to you than your very own breath. It may seem like God can be silent, even in our suffering. The story of the Israelites, we all know this familiar story in the Old Testament, is is covered by uh, perceived silence of God. The Israelites have been delivered from slavery by the very hand of God and directed to travel through the wilderness, crossing the Red Sea and getting to the Promised Land, Exodus 13. It says that God went before them in a pillar cloud to lead them along the way, and by night a pillar of fire to guide them by light, that they might travel by day and by night to advance the enemy. The pillar cloud by day and night did not depart from them. God's promises to be with us. God promises us God's presence, even in the face of when it seems like God is silent. God gives us God's presence, his guidance, and his light to lead the path. The Israelites got to the Red Sea, and they saw the army of Egyptians. They forgot quickly what God has already done for them In the face of trials, sometimes we often, too, forget what God has done before. If God has delivered before and showed up before, God will do it again. Like the Israelites, we may experience the silence of God in the midst of our suffering when pain encloses around us the pillar of light we know is the Christ which shines down on us. God's voice might feel distant And our trials sometimes can speak louder and cause us unbelief, telling us that our pain is greater than God's voice, which is not true. In my own life, I have walked through many months of God being seemingly silent so I can understand our text today. But when God is seemingly silent in our suffering, we must be comforted by the fact that seasons do begin and seasons do end. And all we have to do is walk through our valley. Our circumstances cannot cancel out the voice of God, and our pain cannot quiet our king. When God seems quiet and suffering, we, must have to, we have to remember and repeat and reflect on the promises that God has told his people. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is here. God is here right now, even in the midst of your situation and circumstances. Even when God seems silent, God is here. When God seems silent, we have to ask ourselves if the voice of God is determined by our circumstances rather than the promises that God has spoken to us decades and ages ago. Sometimes what we see can make us forget what God has said, but I want to encourage you to keep God's promises near and dear to your hearts. I will never leave you nor forsake you. When God seems silent, God is not. God is always working and being. And you notice that I said when God seems silent, I did not say that God is silent because God is the great I am. God is the alpha and the omega. God is, period, meaning God is. It's action. It is a verb. God is. I did not say God was, and I did not say that God is silent. There is a realm that we cannot see where God fights for us, a realm we cannot see, but one we can participate in through prayer, We know that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces and evil places. God 
might be silent, but God is working on our behalf in the spiritual realm. God might be silent in your situation, but God doesn't have time to stop fighting this spiritual battle to say, hold on, April, you know, let me give you some comfort. God is working and moving on our behalf, and God's silent does not mean God's absence. When God seems silent, we have to ask ourselves if we have limited the voice of God to the answer that we want God to say. Is God silent or did God answer, but God did not answer the way that you want it, and so you think that God is silent? (laughs) Sometimes it's God's will for our situations to remain unchanged because God is trying to change us while we are in our situations. You remember Paul repeatedly prayed for relief from the thorn to be taken from his side in 2 Corinthians 12 and 8. God eventually responded, but not right away. I'm sure Paul thought that God was seemingly silent (laughs) until God responded. And then when God responded, he responded not according to what Paul wanted, but according to God's will in the situation. Sometimes our situation remains unchanged because God is trying to change us in the process. Maybe we're seeking his voice when God is giving us God's presence. Maybe we're seeking his voice when God is trying to give us his peace. Maybe we're seeking God's voice when God is trying to strengthen us for the journey. God can be seemingly quiet even in the noise of life. Perhaps God seems silent because we're too loud. In the mundane and in our regular lives, it can be easy for us to fill our minds with other voices rather than God's. In our spare time, we pick up our phones and we scroll through Instagram and Facebook, social media. We tap into news stories, all while our friends, uh, you know, try to get our attention and, and call us further away from God. We listen to other voices you know, voices of news outlets in the world and everything that's happening in our world today. But the last thing sometimes for us to do is to sit in silence with our king, void of distractions. And at the end of the day, God may have tried to speak with us tens of thousands of times, but we couldn't hear because we were too busy listening to something or someone else. In Psalm 62, It's less about David feeling like God was silent and more about David silencing himself so that he can hear from God. I encourage you today to make room for the voice of God wherever you are today. Push aside the clutter and make space to listen to God's voice today. (laughs) If we can just put down our phones for a second, the remote control, the TV screens, the Instagram reels, and just make room for our king, because I promise you, the God who has your name engraved on his hands has something to say to you today, but are we listening? Sometimes we have to get quiet. Sometimes we have to get still. Sometimes we have to get focused to see and to watch and to pray. When we feel like God seems silent, we must know that we are also in good company, Jesus in the garden. Our pain does not quiet our king, Jesus in the garden. Our circumstances do not cancel out who God is. Silence does not shut up the activity of God in our lives. Jesus received no response when he cried out on the cross. Sometimes God's silence means that we are experiencing God's sovereign will. And we need to pray for grace to accept God's will. God came to be with us so that we could hear God's voice. And as Jesus cries out, it is finished. I'm sure that the world believed that it had been silenced forever. I can only imagine how deafening the silence must have been for those three days where he laid in the tomb. Yet in the silence, the plan to save the world was being carried out. 
God did not have time to say, hold on, I'm carrying out this plan. God was working in this spiritual realm for us to save the world. So just hold on. It was in the waiting that God was putting on the most triumphant display of glory. It was in the suffering of Christ crucified that delivered our salvation. Trust in the Lord and lean not onto your own understanding because after three days of silence came a risen king, an empty tomb, and the hope of glory in our Savior, Jesus the Christ. I am familiar with the doubt and the insecurity that seasons like this may bring. In such seasons, I have learned that silence is not punishment, that silence is a gift because it adds something to us. It adds a little more patience, a little more resilience, a little more perseverance. So I encourage you today to not see God's silence as forsaken, but to know that God is with you and to know that God is fighting for you in a realm that we cannot see, that God works on a time that is not our own. God works on Cairo's time. Don't let the silence make you pull away, but instead lean in. I just stopped by today to remind somebody that Silence is not absence. Keep going, keep praying, keep believing, keep hoping, keep laughing, keep dancing, keep praising, keep on keeping on because God's silence is not absence. God is here. And do not let what you see make you forget what God has said. The word of our Lord today. Amen.